Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the XOR function. So the XOR function performs an exclusive OR uh, logical calculation. And what it is, it's something that's probably used more in computer programming in general or in um, computer science. Um, basically what you're doing is you're testing a true and false condition of a set of arguments. Uh, but what does that really mean? Well, basically, if, when you use the XOR function in Excel, uh, and this this function was first available in Excel 2013, so if you have previous Excel versions, this won't be available there. So what this really means is the XOR function will return true if the result is true for either of two results, but not for both or not for neither. And this is for something where we, if we have two logical statements, um, it will re it will give you this particular output. So uh, maybe an example would help. So if we have two logical statements here, uh, and we're using it in the XOR function, and we're saying uh, one is greater than zero, that's true, and negative one is less than zero, and that's true, the result of the XOR function is false. Um, if we follow on and just change it a little bit here, where we say one is greater than zero, that's true, and negative one and we're saying if negative 1 is greater than 0, well, that's clearly false. So this is an either or function. So basically, all you need to do is get a true output if one of these values is true. Now, the last particular example here, we're saying the XOR function, if 1 is less than 0, that's obviously false. And if uh, is one negative 1 greater than 0, that's obviously false. If we put that into the XOR function, that's going to result in a false output. So how can we use this particular function in the real world? So there may be a, an example here. And let's say, for example, uh, we have a list of students, and they have to go through three rounds uh, to finish game one. Uh, and depending on how well they do in these three rounds, they can go on to game two. And so if students already win both rounds, they're going to automatically go into game two. And if they lose both rounds, they're not even going to go to game two. But what about the students that win round one or win round two, but don't win the other round? Well, we can use the XOR function to kind of, I guess, quickly uh, identify those students. So what we can do here is, for this first particular row, we'll just type equal XOR. And then we'll say, for this round, this B3, does that equal to W? The, are they a winner in that? And then we can say for C2, do they also equal W? Are they a winner? So basically, uh, we don't really need to the, care about the case too much. Excel will kind of ignore the case. But we just want to see if that value equals W and does that value equal W. So I'll go ahead and close the parentheses and press Control Enter to stay in there. And it's false. So basically, it's saying that um, these two values are true. This is true, this is true, so that's false. So if we go back into our overview, if that's true and that's true, it's going to be false, right? And what we can do is we don't need to type the formula in again for the rest of these cells here. We can just take the fill handle here and drag it down, and it's going to copy the formula down. So it's going to see that the student two here, they won round one, but they lost round two. So that's, that is true. They need to go and play round three. So what I can do right now is I can filter for the ones that are true. Oh, by the way, uh, this filter I had is already there. What we can do is if we didn't have this filter here, I can actually turn it. I can pretend I turned it off like it wasn't ever there. But if I want to turn the filter on, I just select in my table. In the Home tab, in the Editing group, we can just select Sort and Filter and just go ahead and select Filter. It's going to put the drop downs for our filter there. So I can just select the drop down, and for the ones that are true, I click OK. So these are the students that need to go ahead and play round three in order to go to game two. So it was either or. They either uh, had the round one equal W or round two equal W. So that's what the XOR function does here. Now, if we had more than, uh, I guess, two arguments, uh, there's a little bit of a difference in the way XOR uh, calculates out. So basically, the way it happens here, if there's more than two arguments, what the XOR function does is it results back in the true if the total number of true inputs is odd. Like for example, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then it, it results back in a false if the true inputs are even. Like here we have one, two, three, four, and that results in false. Same here, this is only two trues and that's a false. 
and it returns a false when all the inputs are false, like down here. All the inputs are false, so it returns a false there. Now, I haven't really been able to find out any real-world application of having more than two arguments, but I'm sure somebody out there may find it. But this is what the XOR function will result in if you have more than two arguments uh, in your evaluation. So the way it's doing it right now, I've got the XOR function, and I just put, I just put trues and falses here. There's no formulas here. There's just plain text here. And what it does is it's just looking at that range and trying to calculate out the exclusive OR for that range of cells. So that's what the XOR function does. And just a, a, a small example here with just a two argument example for the XOR function. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.